Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Create. Did you think I forgot you? I did not. I would not. I um, I'm going to show you a great big mess. That's my studio rack of excellent pieces and parts. And here I am. I have this camera set up right beside me this morning, and that's what took me so long is I really had to rearrange my setup here so I could bring you this beautiful Coffee and Create See You by the Sea. Now, I'm going to pop these up. I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to work on our website but you always need your Wooster. Today, you're going to want your air dry clay. You will also want your, let me get down here to it, your trimmings, molds, there's one and three, your seashells molds. Don't forget your sea sisters. You'll want those. We've already used the Grisaille Toile, and there is your Trimmings 2 mold. So those are the products we're using today on this amazing pirate ship trunk. So I told Charlotte, we were talking about it last week after I did the inlay, and I said, you know, Charlotte, I thought about this long and hard, and the conclusion I came to is that it's not really a pirate trunk to begin with. <clears throat> it belonged to someone who had money, which is why the pirates stole it. So it has to be fancy. It has to be beautiful. So it has to look like this first. I did use uh, the inlays in three places last week. I didn't put them on correctly. So I had to go back and correct myself. Let me take this off of there so I can see your comments. And I went back and just fixed it. On the Grisaille Toile, I found it very difficult if I wasn't paying attention to see which pieces were upside down and which pieces were right side up. And so I put three pieces on backwards and it was no big deal. It just didn't imprint. So I went back, <clears throat> added a little bit more paint, laid the correct side in, did it again and it worked just fine. I wasn't concerned with the lines uh, being perfectly straight, not on this piece. Now on another piece, I probably would have been very concerned about them lining up correctly. Uh, this piece, not so much. I'm gonna turn my volume down. There we go. Uh, because this will be a little askew anyway anyway so it's not going to hurt my feelings that they're not perfectly lined up and we're going to add molds to this anyway good morning lisa you're still not here do i need to unlock the door so you can come in i will go do that i will go do that for you but we're going to add the molds to this now i love the romanticism of thinking that this is a sunken treasure chest that has barnacles on it and seahorses dancing around it. And of course there's mermaids. There would be mermaids because there's pirates. And this might not be your decor style. I think it would be spectacular in a beach house or a guest bedroom or anywhere that you really wanted to display a unique and a uniquely designed piece. You can't go wrong with a treasure trunk. You just can't go wrong. And 
Let me see if I can pull this photo up. It's just not gonna be there for me. That's okay. So we are going to design in your own style, your own piece of furniture or decor. Starting June 24th with Smalls on Saturday, you can come in and do Smalls on Saturday. We love this class. It's where we teach you how to paint, how to prep, how to paint, and how to protect your piece of furniture or home decor. You can do a lamp. You can do a wall hanging. You sure can. But that's where we teach you the basics of rethunk junk. We started on this trunk with the very basics of rethunk junk. And now we're going into our design elements. Last week we did Griselle Toile. This week we're going to do the molds. Next week we're going to do all of the finishing work. And you can do a design workshop series if you would like. Or you can just do Smalls on Saturday. Starting next on June 24th. So today, let's get into these molds. Let me show you what I have done. I keep clicking back and forth because I'm ready to start, but I'm not ready to start. Let me show you what I have done. I'm gonna pull these out of the bag very carefully. It's not a cat in a hat or a bag, it's not. And I have broken a couple of pieces, so I'll pull those out as well. These are ice cold molds, ice cold. Because last night I precast my molds and then I put them in the freezer. And yes, Scott Pruitt said, Dee, what are you doing? I'm making molds. I'm making molds for my pirate trunk. But let me explain to you why I do this. These are precast. This is from Trimmings 3. I love this. We're using this. I tried to do the rope molds, but they weren't having any part of me. Um, I can do that today because I wanted to do one continuous stretch. And it wasn't having any part of me. So I will put the trimmings molds to the side. I did one lock and one key. But here's why. When I freeze these, they come out nearly perfect every single time. Very, very few or no cracks at all. And they come out of the molds almost like perfect polymer clay, resin. The freezer dries things out, so it helps to dry some of the moisture out of the molds, out of the clay. And when you take them out, your small bits, like the mermaid's arm right here, your small bits don't break so easily. When you're doing just clay in the mold, it's kind of tough, isn't it? But the freezer, that is the trick. That is the trick. Can you imagine the tail on the seahorse? And unless you do resin every time, which I don't wanna do resin every time, I wanna use clay sometimes. But unless you do resin, it's so hard to get the tail of that seahorse out of there. But if you freeze them, freeze them hard, and you're gentle when you take them out, you still need to be gentle. You can keep that tail right where it belongs. I'm going to show you. Let me lay down some, I'm going to, right in front of you, excuse me. Ta-da. I'm gonna lay down some brown paper towel, institutional brown paper, and I'm gonna dust off my workbench right in front of my trunk. 
I was in here working yesterday. Quietly, peacefully. There we go. But I made a mess. I made a dusty mess because I'm working on another project. You see it right there? That is the most plain vanilla piece I've ever painted, but it is beautiful. It did turn out beautiful. Let's put, let's cast our molds out. I'm going to go ahead now, I'm going to switch the camera because I want you to see these molds coming out so you can see how easy freezing these and popping them out can be. Look at my little baby starfish. I'm gonna save those seahorses because that's just a, it's always a surprise to me. Still, it amazes me how simple and easy this is and how beautiful the results are. So if you are opposed to clay <clears throat> because it's hard to get the pieces out or because you can't, um, you can't get all the clay out at one time. Look at that little seahorse. He's so cute. Look at that beautiful tail. Now I just broke the other one. I did, but in my defense, it's where I pieced the clay together. So it's not a big deal. The neat thing is because it's frozen, as it thaws out, this will just meld back together and it'll be easier than if it were just clay, just doing it right out of the mold. So I'm gonna clip his tail right back on right this second. I'm gonna try not to muss up his beautiful tail detail. The thumbnail is definitely helpful on this particular mold and there we go. He's fine. Extra little bits that are stuck inside the detail, they come right out. Got a little bit on the edge of the clamshell. They come right off. They come right off. It, it's almost like resin castings, but not because they're clay. So as they thaw, good morning, Miss Judy. As they thaw, they are perfect to apply. They are ready to go on. Now I'm gonna to try to be more careful with my Sea Sisters. But they, as, they, as they start to thaw out, they get a little, um, a little stickier than your clay because they're defrosting, but they are so, so perfect. And just gently pop around those small bits. There we go. And she came out all by herself in an amazing casting. That's clay, that's frozen clay. I love this process and I think you will too. I think you'll love the results and you don't have to leave them in overnight. I left mine in overnight because I did it late last night. But I think a good 20 minutes in the freezer is sufficient. It gives you all that you need for it to freeze up hard and, and come right out of that mold, just like you need it to. There we go, boom, she's good, she's good. Got a little tear in her tail. Again, that's where I pieced the clay together, but I think that'll be okay long-term. Now, here's the other thing I did, did, did not do. I did not seal this 
inlay. Now you know it's still active until you seal it. And if you don't seal that inlay and you get it wet, it will smear. You will smudge your image. I'm okay with that. And here's why I'm okay with that. We are creating the look of something that has been deep sea. So we're not so concerned. But if you were doing a different project and you were concerned about smearing and you didn't want to smudge your image, then you should definitely seal it before you do any other work. I'm gonna dust this off. This is a dry cloth, and I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any bits from my work yesterday on here. We're gonna go ahead. I have my Aline's Tacky Glue. These are fabulous. These are so, these are simple to use because they're small. I turn them upside down, stick them in a cup, and that way I'm not constantly battling trying to get my glue out. My go-to is usually tight bond. This works very well. So now all we have to do is decide the layout. That's not as easy as it sounds, is it? So let's start right here. Let's start on this corner. Let's start with our starfish, because I love a starfish. And because they're clay, and this is thawing out nicely, as they thaw, you can still shape them. You don't get this opportunity with resin unless you do it immediately. Resin will not bend like that after it's dry. Clay will bend like this all day, every day. I love my resin castings, but sometimes clay just gives you a different finish, a different look. Make sure you carry your glue all the way out to the edges. Now I've got a lot of glue on there and I could take, I've got some right here. I have a whole stack of paintbrushes. I'm gonna take one of my sticky brushes. There we go. There we go. It's a, it's a coarser brush, coarser hair. And I'm just gonna brush the glue smooth. This'll do two things for you. This will keep glue from smushing out the ends because once you put it on, if you have glue smushing out the ends, you really wanna clean it up. See, that's how much glue would have smushed out. So it keeps your glue from smushing out the ends and it ensures that you have glue side to side. All right. And just lay him in. Lay him in gently because you don't want to smush out the detail. You want all his little pebbly legs showing. And just like that, we're started. We are started. Now we have clam shell. And just go to town. Put your molds wherever you like. I'm going to put a heavier emphasis on this one corner. I will put them all over, but on this one corner, I'm gonna put a little more emphasis and next week, it'll all culminate. It'll all make so much sense. That's what I'm going for anyway. And once you set them, because we're on a vertical surface, I have my tape. So as you set them, if they start to slide, Take your tape and just support them. You don't have to tape anything down hard. You just need the tape to support them so they don't slide down. 
I'm going to turn this light back on so that we have, um, there we go. That makes it better to see, doesn't it? So we have the clamshell down here. We have the small starfish here. And I really need my seahorse in my life. And I'm gonna let him live right here on this corner. So let's get some glue on him. This is the one that I popped the tail off. And if I'm not careful, I'm gonna pop the tail right back off of him because I did piece some clay together. So let's do him. And the other thing I absolutely adore about freezing the molds is that if something does break, as it defrosts, your, your molds, your castings are sticky and it's easier to stick a piece back together and I'll show you because he just did that. My little seahorse just dropped his tail on the table. I'm gonna lay him in right here and we're gonna let him swim over the top edge of this piece of molding. And we'll put his tail right back on. Here we go. Right back on. Now, I will usually take a small brush. This one has real fine edges and you can take that and squish it back together. Just brush the clay together basically. That way you're not using your fingers. You're not really damaging the detail because you can use the brush to, to redefine the detail. You don't want it to be obvious that it came apart and you put it back together, right? There we go. I want him to lay right across that molding. Now he's a little heavy. He's trying to slide. So I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm just gonna go right underneath him and just support him so he does not slide down. His little head sliding just a little bit. I'll take another piece of tape and just support his head. I don't wanna cram the tape on because I don't want to peel him or the paint or the inlay back off. This is my higher tack tape. My green tape is over on the shelf. I like my blue tape for this because it's stronger and it is less expensive. So I'm not using up my good tape just to hold glue on. Now I did these molds. They're fancy. That's so fancy. Love that. I think we should do it but I really wanted to create the look of the strapping across the top. Can you see up there? Let me get you up a little bit and show you just what I mean. I'm extended as far up as I can go. So I'll just ease you in. I'll just ease you on into the table. There we go. So, most of the time, your trunks have straps across them. I want the straps to come just down in between the panels because that's where they would have hooked, right? And that way we can bring those straps all the way down. And if we want to, we can come across the center line with some molds. This is a little dry. Here we go. So we can create our own strapping with the Trimmings 3 mold. Now I cracked that, so I'm gonna back it out of the way and I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put this on. When you look at your molds 
and you see the design of the mold. Look past it to what you can actually create with that mold. And we're definitely gonna want a piece of tape right here. So I'll come underneath and just support that piece right there. And then we'll glue this upper portion. We'll smooth it out. Look past what the mold is and look at what you can make it become. I think one of my pickers always used to say and probably still says, making it what it ain't. But if you want to create a strap where there isn't a strap, all you need is a little bit of imagination, some clay, and some molds. And I know you have a vivid imagination because you're working with paint and embellishment products. And if you're not, why not? What's stopping you from creating something that you can vision Good morning, Jamie. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for stopping in. Lisa is not here again today. I don't know what that girl is thinking. <laughs> Before we get juiced out again. All right. This is the piece that broke off the end of that one. I did have to take these out of the molds in order to create multiple pieces at one time. And I actually, because we're going to age this, am totally okay with the fact that it did crack apart. Now, it's a pirate trunk, sunken treasure trunk, and it really can't be perfect, right? It's supposed to have some little dings and damage and not be exact. Let me know if you got the feedback, because I really, really would feel kind of silly if I was just standing here talking to myself. I am going to sort of measure this so that I don't go completely crooked. Hey, so far I'm straight. Look at that. I am mostly straight. Here we go just to keep me on task right there. I'm gonna scooch this over because that way it'll be straight and our strap will come on down just like it should. And then, oh, that's exactly what happens. I'm so, Lisa, I love you, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry, I love you, I'm sorry. I won't do it again, most likely. I won't do it again, most likely. <laughs> Mostly is good enough. Lynette, I love you. I love your measure of success. You're my friend. We can always be friends like that. There we go. And see, we are. I'm easing over just a little bit. There are some things I am a little OCD about. And making sure my lines are straight is kind of one of them. Isn't that a beautiful strap across the top of this piece? I love that. Let me glue this in. I don't want to even take it up because I, I want to make sure it stays right where it's supposed to. And I love that these molds were designed to lay into each other so that when you put them together, well, there you go, they lay one into the next, just like a socket and it's perfect symmetry in an imperfect world of molds and clay and live tutorials. There we go. Love it. All right, all the way down Main Street here. Not too much, not too little, because you can take your paintbrush and spread the glue just like this.
edge to edge. So today, if you come by the store, you will find me moving furniture and playing with moldings, mold castings, clay. You'll find me right here. We are working hard on the studio because we have a goal for an opening. We are working still on the mechanics of the plan. We will give you details soon on how you can become a member of the studio at Two Girls Treasure. Because then you can come in and have all the fun all the time. All right, let's see. Am I straight? I am. Boom, chakalaka. We have the beginnings of our strap. And I think it's a beautiful strap. And it is nothing more than a piece, a continuous piece of trimmings mold glued on to create a strap. And I'll come on down right through here. And we will have an absolutely beautiful trunk top. Very unique and individual. Now we have a mermaid. We have two mermaids and we have merbabies. And I thought about this last night when I made the merbabies. And I think I want the merbabies front and center. Right underneath the lock. Now this is an old lane cedar chest and I have not called for a replacement. They're not hard to replace at all. I don't know if they're still offering the replacements. If they are, we will get one. If they're not, we will replace it. It is not going to be something that holds us up. It's not the deal breaker on this piece. They're really easy to pop out. And if you have an old lane cedar trunk, make sure you change that lock. Make sure you do. All right, mer babies in the middle, front and center little bit of glue because they're heavy and they are going to slide. I'm going to put a piece under the center to keep it right where I want it. There we go. They'll stay. They're good mar babies. Sweet little mar babies. There we go. Love that. And once I get the lock removed, we will add the lock and key mold and where there are mer babies there are mermaids so let's get our mermaids on before we go today i'll bring you around so you can see a little bit better where we're going here mer babies in the center mermaids on the sides now, I've got my strapping here. My other strap will go here. So we're good in the center right here. I'm gonna put my glue on. She's gonna take a lot of glue. I wanna be very careful to make sure I get those arms glued down so they don't crack and break. And I wanna make sure I get the tail glued just right so it does not crack and break. It's still clay, and clay is an all-natural product, a mostly completely natural product. And because of that, when it dries out, it'll, it'll crack. And most of what we did by putting it in the freezer was dehydrating it. But it is still clay, and as it thaws out, it has a lot of moisture in it. 
and it will still crack because it's clay. And some cracking is not bad, especially if you're doing an aged piece. If you don't want cracks, the thing to do is to immediately paint your castings, your clay castings. It slows down the drying process. And if you slow down the drying process, then you slow down the opportunity for cracks. I'll raise her other hand up. I'll clean that glue off. Let's shore her up, pun intended. That was funny, wasn't it? Let's shore her up with a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here. And let me grab a wipe and clean up where I moved her arm. I try to keep the glue cleaned up because it does make a mess and it you can still see it even when you paint over it you can still see that there's glue there so I try to make sure I clean the glue edges up because I don't want you to see that she's glued on it's all an illusion right Just a little gentle wipe on the in-between. You can do this with a wet paintbrush or dry paintbrush. You can do this with a small paintbrush as well. And right there. And she's on there. She is so pretty. A little bit of glue at the tail side and she is good to go. Once this is painted, once we do our finish next week, it'll be so much easier to see these mold castings. Right now they're blending in with everything Grisale, aren't they? A little bit tough to see. Thanks, Jamie. The more you age, the less you will OCD. Oh, you know. The more you do this, the less you OCD, Lynette. There is no room for OCD in this store. You just let it roll, let it roll. We'll get a little bit of the glue off the top of my mer babies and make sure their edges are down. Just like you have to watch your paint as you're going around it, you sort of have to watch your molds as well. You wanna make sure your edges are down. You wanna make sure your glue doesn't squish out. Check yourself as you're doing your work and make your work as amazing as you envision it to be. How are we doing for time? I know I was late. I know I was, but I'm here now. We are still experiencing some technical difficulties with our collection on our website. The collection is there. So don't hesitate to make your purchases from the collection. What the problem is, is that it's technology and it has gotten itself twisted around in a knot and it is really hard to correct it once it gets that way. I'm working on it though. Who knew I had done so many videos? I did not realize it. I just know that every week, every Tuesday, it is amazing to come here and hang out with y'all and do this work and show you all the different ways that I envision using these products. And I hope somewhere in it, you know that you can do this too and that you get your tools out 
find something really cool to play with. The technology will take care of itself. The Coffee and Create collection is on the website. There's a whole tab for it. And all the products that we're working with in the month of June are listed on that collection. And you just go on that collection and purchase whatever you'd like. If you come in the store and make your purchases, you can still save. You can still save. Now I'm gonna turn her just a little bit differently. We'll bring her arm up. She's swimming. Bring your arm up, girl, right there. Tack it down and there we go. Oh, here comes the train. Ready, set. Oh, blow the horn. Thank you. Don't disappoint. Beautiful. One's a little higher than the other. I love it because they're swimming together. They don't have to be on the same plane. They're in the same ocean, having fun playing with a pirate trunk. How about you? Are you gonna make a pirate trunk this week? Are you gonna look for an old lame cedar trunk that nobody wants? Cause this thing was ugly y'all and nobody wanted it. No matter how many times I offered it, nobody wanted this green ugly trunk. Good morning. Charlotte's in the house. That means it is almost time for my fun to come to an end with you today. But it's okay. It's totally okay because we can do this all day long. So I have my strap started right there. I have some of my sea creature elements on the legs. I have my mermaids and my mer babies. We're off to a really great start with all of the molds. I have more to play with. There she is. I caught her. That was perfect timing. <laughs> Charlotte and I are going to get to work, or at least Charlotte is. I'm going to be right here working with these clay molds for a little while longer. And I am, when I get ready to add more molds and I run out of what I already have on the table, I'm going to fill those mold cavities up with air dry clay and I'm going to stick them in the freezer in the office. I'm going to let them freeze up. I'll do a little bit of work and I'll come back and I'll add more molds to it. It's going to be amazing. Next week, we're going to do the verdigris and the rust effects over the entire trunk, including the molds and the grisaille. And I will show you how to drip the grisaille to age it. I will show you how to add rust effects using salt wash and rethunk junk paints. And we will finish up this pirate trunk and then we'll have to put something inside of it. I don't know, some kind of prize. It'll be wonderful. Don't miss out. I'm Diane Pruitt. We are here at Two Girls Treasure in Florence, South Carolina. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. You can find us online anytime. This is the Coffee and Create collection part of the design workshop series. You can get involved. June 24th will be our very first Smalls on Saturday installment of the design workshop series for July. Make your reservations, go on the workshops tab and click the button for June 24th. We'll be in here from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. You can bring your own small piece of furniture or decor item, something that fits in your front seat of your car, not a tractor trailer. And you can come learn how to prep, how to paint, and how to protect your favorite piece 
using Rethunk Junk Paint products. And then, if you want, you can join us two more times in July and design your piece of furniture or home decor. I'll walk you through all the details, get set up for it, and call us if you have questions. Thanks so much, y'all have the most amazing week, and I'll look forward to seeing you right here again real soon.